It's GED question of the day time, and it looks like I have a very typical GED style problem. A word problem combined with a diagram, lots going on, lots of information. Uh, let's see if we can interpret this. So the table below shows the potential power production of various windmills as related to the diameter of the rotor or spinning portion of the windmill. And it says find the area of the circle, this is what I'm finding, to the nearest tenth of a square meter, to the nearest tenth of a square meter. This is rounding directions. Hear that rounding language? To the nearest tenth. I always leave rounding directions till the end of my problem. That's always the final thing you do. Formed by the spinning of the windmill that produces 31.8 kilowatts. Okay, so I've been asked to find the area of the circle. Of which circle? The circle that's made by this windmill that produces 31.8 kilowatts. So once again, anytime I'm asked to find area, I can feel free to consult my formula sheet. My GED formula sheet has the area formulas on it already, so I don't have to have them memorized. So let's go hit up that formula sheet. So I went and Googled it, a GED formula sheet, and I came up with this. This is the official GED formula sheet here. Okay, you'll be having this as you take your test. This will be one of your drop down options. So if you do get an area of a circle problem, and they very commonly appear, especially in word problems, uh, you'll be able to get that formula. So make sure you're in the area uh, section, area section, whoa. And I go right to my circle, and there's the area of a circle formula. A, or area, is equal to pi r squared. That little uh, symbol is called pi. Probably heard tons of math jokes about pi. That's what we're talking about when mathematicians joke about pi. So a equals pi r squared. Okay, let's go back to our problem here. And the very first thing you should do if you're a wise student is to write down the formula that you just found. And so I did not leave myself a lot of space on this particular problem, but I will write it up here on the top. A equals pi r squared. Notice I haven't plugged anything in yet. I don't know any numbers. All I did was write down the formula. This is like the introduction to a paper. You're telling um, yourself and whoever is reading your work when you go into college, your math work will be read. You're telling uh, them what you plan to do, what your plan is. Okay, now we want to find the area of the circle. Area is the mystery, okay? And so that will be what remains a letter. Whatever the thing is that you're looking for stays a letter in a formula. And I'm going to keep my equals. Now, let's talk about pi. A lot of people think pi is a variable, um, like x or y, that it can change. But no, pi is not a variable. Pi is an actual number. Um, it, it, it's what we call an irrational number, meaning its decimal form goes on forever and ever. Like seriously, it would never end. 3.14159. That's a pain in the butt number. We don't want a decimal number that never ends. And so um, we just don't want to do computations with it as mathematicians because we're lazy. And so we'll just call it pi. That's why we call pi pi. And so... Um, However, in word problems, what ends up happening a lot of the time is we end up rounding anyway. And in fact, we saw there was rounding language in our problem. And so in a case like this, we'll use a decimal approximation for pi. This isn't exactly pi, but 3.14 is close enough to pi that it'll give us a decent enough answer. We are approximating. And don't worry, you don't have to have this number memorized. This is on the formula sheet as well. You can. It says that pi is approximately equal to to 3.14 right there on that formula sheet. So the only thing that I have to plug into this formula then, the only variable I have is the radius. I have to know the radius of my circle in order to plug in. And that's where things get tricky, I gotta tell you. Because most students just plug in 31.8. They're like, yay, 31.8, and they do that. And if you were to do that, you'd be wrong. Okay, so don't do that. Let me erase it, in fact, in case you start trying to do that. <laughs> okay, why would you be wrong? 
Well, R stands for radius. You need the radius of your circle. And if you've ever uh, seen a picture of a circle, what a radius is, is it is a line that's drawn from the center of the circle to the outside. That's the radius of a circle, okay? This formula will not work unless you plug the radius in. This thing that, this 31.8, that's not a radius. That's 31.8 kilowatts. This is power production. Okay, how much power you produce is not the same as the radius of a circle. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to go use this diagram I've been given to find this radius that I need to plug into my formula. So let's go take a look. On this diagram, I do see 31.8 kilowatts as a power production, but if you look, that 31.8 kilo, kilowatts comes from a uh, 9 meter rotor diameter. And here they are trying to trick me again. This is the next mistake students make. They just plug in 9 meters. They go, oh look, it's meters, it must be the radius. But careful, this is not labeled as a radius, this is labeled as a diameter. Well, what's a diameter? A diameter similar to the radius, but instead of just going from the center to the edge, the diameter goes all the way across. It goes through the center, uh, but it goes from edge to edge of a circle. And so if you think about it, if you have from here to the edge, from the center to the edge is one radius, and then to, from this center to this edge would be another radius, the diameter is twice the radius. Or another way to think of it is the radius is half of the diameter. So what I'm going to need to do to take this diameter number and turn it into a radius is to half it. Probably the easiest way to half something is just to divide by 2. And so that's what I'll do. I'll break it into two equal pieces because a diameter is like two equal radiuses. And I get 4.5 or 4.5. And so my radius is 4.5. See how they'll try to trick you? They frequently do this on the GED. They'll give you the formula, they'll give you the numbers, but it's not the numbers you need. And you gotta do a little bit of work to get the numbers that you need for the formula. Okay, so now I've plugged in. I have my pi, I have my radius, and I square it. And I'm gonna just type this entire thing into my TI30XS calculator, my GED calculator, because y'all need to know how to use this thing. So I type in my 3.14. 3.14, and you can even use a parenthesis. I'm just gonna open up a parenthesis. I'm gonna type 4.5, and I'm gonna close that parenthesis. Now, a lot of students don't know how to type a square into their TI30XS. The way you do that is with this little X squared button. It looks like this, X2. So type that X squared button. And now you might notice this calculator doesn't have an, enter, an equal sign, it has an enter button. So I press the enter button and I get this, 63.5. 585. Now I'm almost done, but it would be awful to do all this work and then get dinged because I didn't follow instructions. Do you remember those rounding instructions we saw? Remember that your final step in these problems, if, you, if you've been asked to, for a final step, we're always going to round. So let's take a look at our rounding directions. The problem said to the nearest tenth of a square meter, to the nearest tenth of a square meter. Okay, so that means that our number has to stop after the tenths place. Well, let's take a look. So as soon as I see this th, I know I'm in decimal places, and the tenths is the very first place after the decimal, tenths. This would be hundredths, this would be thousandths, okay? Um, and so I know my number needs to stop after this tenths place. But be really, really careful. You can't just chop off numbers and throw them away without considering if they were big enough to matter, if they were big enough to matter. So I'm going to look at the very next number I'm throwing away, the 8. I'm about to throw it away, but I need to ask myself before it goes, was I more than halfway through my digits yet? Was I at 5 or higher? Uh, 5 is the halfway point uh, in, the dig in our digit system. And so once you get to that halfway point, you need to round up. And indeed, I am five or higher. And so what's going to happen is this eight before it dies is going to affect uh, the number in the tenths place. And so I'm going to round that five up to its very next digit of six. And I'll get 63.6, I'm going to call it, uh, square meters. You might be thinking, Kate, why is it square meters? Um, the original di uh, diameter measurement and 
uh, radius measurement that I was looking at was in plain old meters. Well, this is area. Remember that area is always measured in square units. In fact, by definition, area is the number of square units to cover a shape. Okay, so if I were to cover my windmill circle in little squares, I would have 63.6 little squares to cover this shape. Okay, so that is the final answer. The area of the circle uh, created by this windmill is 63.6 square meters. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments.